see life today, uh, reality of life today, especially if your uh, system administrators in your offices will really be able to appreciate that. Uh, just walk you through. Today you have a data center. What they not this is for any system. It could be Linux, it could be Unix, it could be anything you came about 30 years before now or what you are using now. Respond to hardware failures, handle increase in traffic. These are things that they respond to on a daily uh, basis. That's what their time predominantly is spent, which obviously means the enterprise is spending money on all of this. Hack storage capacity. Okay? Diagnose system failures and then respond to it. Apply OS patches, that's a fact of life. Uh, today, every day, uh, you have some patch or other coming on because that's a new vulnerability. The only system, one of my friends said, is a complete secure system is only one which you don't connect it to the internet. Just have a single machine, my laptop now is absolutely safe. But I haven't connected to anyone. Okay, so that's how it is. Okay, then one. Performing live upgrade to, for a new feature, and uh, obviously then you upgrade it, old feature doesn't work, and then you start reacting to it, and all that stuff. Expand to new locates, locate many new languages, culture, uh, time zones, etc. All these things your system administrators. I can keep talking for hours on this. But these are the things that they do, but not even one of them, you can name it as is critical for your business. All of you, all of your organizations, and my organization also will be doing the same job. There's absolutely no business. It could be for manufacturing, it could be for finance, it could be for pharma, it could be for government, it could be for NGO. Doesn't really matter. It could be for SME or enterprise. All this has to be done today. And if you think about it, there's no reason. We don't do this today in our cars. I actually don't even know how to change the step name in car. That's how cars have become so reliable. You can even drive if it has a puncture and you carry on for a few miles. That's how good cars have become. But software, which is supposed to be latest technology, requires you to do all this. Which in my opinion is what a mechanic in a car does. You have to do all this. There's nothing that is business critical for you. But all these pieces are your service crews and operations, as I like to call them. But today each one of us is spending time on this. Only on top of this, a small portion is your business logic. It should be the other way around. Okay, but today the fact of life is we all spend up money on the bottom. Okay, and uh, in Vishwak, of course, we don't do anything on the IT infrastructure as a service to our customers. So we can always say if the only companies that get benefited are the IT services companies. Anyways. Uh, so what's missing here? What's missing is an operating system for the cloud. We only have operating systems that are there for mobile phones, operating systems for the laptops, operating systems for your servers, but we don't have operating system for the cloud. That's the missing piece here. Because each of these services that you build, somebody is expecting that you will manage it. The glue is not given. That's where something like Windows Azure really comes in. And the name Windows in front of it actually is the clue here. It's the operating system. This, when I start talking about BPOS, you'll see that's a service that they are offering, but there's an operating system that they are offering. There's a clear difference between these two. And the first time I heard about Azure is I was really assured of one thing, Microsoft is putting that neck on it. Windows is very, very important. No product has Windows other than very few of the core jewels that have Windows on top. So this means Microsoft is really betting on this, putting their money, putting their image. A long-term investment on this particular platform is guaranteed because they have Windows. If not, press is going to say, okay, if they kill Azure, say three years down the line, press is going to say they kill Windows, which they have not do it. So that's the clue. The amount of importance Microsoft is seeing onto this whole thing, they see this as an operating system rather than as just a platform as a service or any other thing. Because this is the missing piece today that's not available to anybody else. You name any competition, they don't bring in an operating system on the cloud. They only give you the infrastructure plus the services. That's the key difference that Microsoft actually uh, plays here. Just looking into details, I like to, being an engineer, would like to know the how it really works. What is Azure? It's an operating system, it's great. Okay, Microsoft takes care of everything. Uh, life becomes very beautiful. We just manage on the blue portion I'm talking about. But what it is really inside Azure, like Chanavas was mentioning, Microsoft runs a huge number of soft data centers. They even have a data center in um, Siberia because I believe the, it's really cold below uh, freezing temperatures, so you don't need to spend that much on air conditioning. Okay, so what is Azure at the end of the day? These are the shipping containers with servers. And they have a very interesting logic that they don't repair when there is one fault in one server. They just let that server fault happens, they shut down that server, meaning they don't send traffic, they don't use that server. 50% of the server fails, they just shut down the whole shipping container, call Dell or automatically Dell knows it. Dell picks up that shipping container and puts another container with the internet servers. Very simple. So the human cost of one engineer walking and fixing each server failure is not available. Nobody walks into the servers. 
50% of the server fails, only then they change the entire shipping container. So it's a very nice concept if you look at it. The whole concept of how we manage data centers changes at this stage. Anyway, so what does us do? It's all these servers, any number of servers which are there, thousands and thousands of servers. Each of them run virtual machines, and each of those virtual machines run Windows, obviously. So if you visualize this cube to be one machine, physical machine, then that would be a number of virtual machines that are running. And each could be given to each individual client. And since it's a virtual machine, there's complete protection on memory, isolation, you don't have access to the hardware. A lot of work has been done to secure these instances. So it is no better, or in fact, it's sometimes better than you running two different machines, and which is mostly in the same uh, ISP. This is much more secure than that because a lot of effort of government is secure into the memory and the access point and the failures, etc. So this is the last night on Azure. So fine. So that's what Azure is. It's an operating system. What it means, because it's an operating system, you can write applications on top of it. Today, when you write applications to Windows, you don't worry about USB port, printer, which printer, or what is the machine, what is the monitor size. In the olden days, say Windows 3.1 or DOS days, you'd actually need to know what is the resolution of the end client uh, machine, or what is the machine is got. Today, we just don't worry about it. Just keep putting the software on whatever hardware you are coming in. The operating system abstracts the whole complexity and the differences. That's exactly what Azure in this case does. It gives you all the platform and infrastructure as a service offering. You just write applications on top of it. Azure gives an API, just like how your .NET or Windows Visual Basic gives you an API. You just write applications on top of that API. Azure takes care of distributing it across a number of machines, or one machine, or thousands of instances, whatever you want to do. Azure does all that heavy uh, lifting uh, for you. And uh, what are what are the things it does? It gives you those. That's what uh, we call it as compute instances, where you can actually run programs. That's called the, that's the first uh, piece here. That's a compute piece. You have a storage piece, that's SQL Server, that's a database. And in this case, the database can grow, and you can put a lot of traffic on this, as much traffic as you want. You can just keep dumping on this, and the database virtually expands uh, limitless. And then you have some uh, platform programming developer platform tools for managing your access control, QA, so on and so forth that you expect in an enterprise uh, software. That's all available to you. Something like J2A, J2E or Microsoft.NET uh, provides in the enterprise world is provided in the cloud world by Azure App Fabric. Okay? On top of it, again as I said, Microsoft is a developer company, developer tools company, so they have their Visual Studio. Even the free versions of Visual Studio can help you to write applications that run on uh, Azure, or you can use open source Eclipse, or you can do even on Python or PHP, and have those applications run on Azure. But the core operating system is Windows Azure, which runs a version of Windows. On top of it, you can have any, uh, most of these programming languages, in fact, even some partners have done Java implementations on top of it. Microsoft doesn't officially uh, support Java today, they support Python, PHP, and any of the target programming languages. So your developers, they don't need to learn a new language. They are programming on C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, PHP, Python, JavaScript, they can just run those. Only thing is apart from .NET, they have to address the Azure APIs. If they do that, the application just run as it is. Okay. So this is from one of our clients, I just taken it that we have done. Uh, to just bring down the point uh, that this is play as you go model. Because all this technology advantage, we can just keep talking for hours. But at the end of the day, what are we talking here? We are talking about no capital investment here. It's only operational and OPEX here. You pay as you go. You don't want it, you just shut it down. But if you have a dummy, you pay for it. And you, today you expect one user to come in, just have one instance. You are expecting 10,000 users, 100,000 users coming in by those many number of instances. There's no commitment. With an ISP, you need to give a commitment. In your data centers, you need to have commitments on the servers you are buying, etc. Here, there's no commitment. You just buy what you want and you just throw it away. It's, it's pure consumer consumerism at its best. In this example, we have done a web application for a customer who was doing like 120 million page views per month for a very special uh, event, something like IPL. They were doing an application. So after IPL, they are not going to do anything. They are not going to get 120 million page views. What are they going to do with this extra infrastructure if they buy it? So we said Azure is going to be a best model for you because their whole application was based on .NET and SQL, etc. So we put it on Azure, we migrated it with some effort. And then we ran it, and if you see the month, this was like two months back, if I write this on August to September 11th. So if you see, this is the data transfer. It's 120 million page views done, those data in, and those data outs, if you see, has costed them something like $5,000, dollars uh, If you say 3 lakh rupees for a month, roughly a month's duration. So all they pay, 
But as you have to do it with that dedicated infrastructure for 120 million pages, something they got to invest like 50 servers on their own. So like really, really huge amount. Even at lowest price, you're talking about those servers running into lags. And, and the maintenance and the pipes uh, that you need to run. Even with, if you go with an ISP, this will be anywhere like the 6,000 will be like 20,000 or 30,000. Because no ISP buys data. Today, in the world, there are two or three companies, or rather four companies, who buy data in that bulk volume, pure volume of economy. One is Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Yahoo. These are the four companies who buy data in the internet, data transfer in and out into the data centers in the bulk. So they get at very, very low price points. Because every ISP in the world want to peer to them. So you have the cost of advantage, etc. So this will be there. So there's complete transparency on this. This uh, sheet actually goes for uh, length. It's a 40 page uh, uh, invoicing report. I'll not take you through, but that's how very easy it is. It's a real uh, data that you've got here. It's charged to your credit card and you can just, it, it tells you what is the number of hours you use, uh, what is the cost for it. If you look at the compute instance, in this case we are actually not using, not doing much of computation. We were having data like IPL score which we are serving. So the processing we only paid about $200 for processing the data because there is no processing. We are only sending the data to the customer who is coming in, requesting for it, millions of those customers. The reverse of this is also possible, say there is a classic story on the cloud on New York Times by instances to just compute uh, the historic data of 200 years of data which is available as a standard TIFF file. They want to run an OCR on it. They are just going to do it once. They needed like 1000 machines. They just bought 1000 instances and then ran it and then destroyed those uh, instances. They spent like $100 or $200. You can search it on the uh, internet and get a very interesting story. So that's with Azure. What you get is a great developer experience. You get computation the operating system, you get the storage and you get the app fabric, the programming platform.